Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I'm gonna to share with you my first experiences printing both PLA and TPU on the FlashForge AD5X using the new IFS, or Intelligent Filament System, because this was one of the biggest selling points about this printer when it was announced, that you were gonna be able to do multicolor TPU printing if you wanted to, or combining two or more filaments with TPU being one of them, and it's funny because if you look on the website now, it doesn't really mention it. So I wanted to know, is it still really possible to do that? So before I show you what I did, let me show you the website for the 85X right now. So this is how it currently stands as of February 21st. Now, as you see here, it doesn't mention anything about TPU right up here on the top. And even when you scroll down, it says that it's multicolor productivity booster, but it's not mentioning TPU until you get to this part here where it says TPU 64D model for this color ball and it's telling you the print time comparison to uh, another rival brand. But when you scroll down even to the specs to see what filament types are supported, it says PLA, PETG, PLA carbon fiber, PETG carbon fiber, dot, dot, dot. But when you look at the Adventure 5M and the 5M Pro, you see that TPU is mentioned among these printers. So now let's take a step back through time to December 2024, and let's look at the website then. So thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can see what the page looked like in December of 2024. And the first highlighted point here is four color TPU printing, which is not currently there on the website. And as we scroll down, we can see here that the first major point again was multicolor TPU printing. That part is not present on the website currently. And we still got the multicolor ball here. It doesn't say TPU 64D anymore. It just says TPU in its original incarnation, but that's still there. But when you scroll down to the specs here and you look at the filaments that are uh, compatible with this printer, you see that it tells us that you can use PETG, PLA, TPU 95A right there, PLA carbon fiber and PETG carbon fiber. So I'm not sure what exactly is going on and why they decided to scrub that. We do know that the printer was delayed late last year because of some issue with the poop shoot as it related to more flexible filaments. So maybe that's why it was taken down. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, I definitely want to see what would happen with TPU. So let me show you what I did. So FlashForge did send me some TPU to try out before I even got the printer. So it's TPU 95A. And when I was looking for a model, I came across a print in place Pokeball. So I opened it up in Orca FlashForge and I wanted the bottom to be TPU, the mid portion to be PLA, and then near the top, switch back over to TPU. And let me show you how it turned out. Now it failed, this is a failure, but the reason why it failed, I suspect is because uh, it was a very small contact area on the bed, basically just right here in the center. It was just like this, like a spinning top. So as it got higher, it just began to wobble. It made me feel very insecure. So I decided to stop the print. So I don't think it had anything to do with the printer. It was just the fact that there was no surface area, not enough contact surface area. And you see that that's why it's kind of like all gnarly bad contact. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because I wanted to show you the transition between the TPU, which is this blue, and the PLA, which is the gray right there. So I did stop the print shortly after that transition, but as you can see, it is quite a clean line from the TPU to the PLA. And it's not separated at all. You know, I can't like rip this apart. There's no layer separation there. It's all a nice clean seam. And if this had managed to print successfully, this would have been a pretty cool example, but it was not successful. So the next thing that I decided to do was to print something a little bit more practical, something that was gonna be faster to print. So I wanted to do a coaster a coaster made out of PLA, 
anti-PU. So this is Orca Flash Forge, and this is the file that I sliced to do this. Now, I had it at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, and then the only thing that I really changed was the infill density. I changed it from 15% to 10%, and then for the infill pattern, I changed it from grid to cross hatch. And as you can see in the device settings, this is what's currently loaded up in my uh, IFS. I got some PLA in slot one, slot two, TPU is in slot three and PLA is in slot four. The TPU is really more of a dark blue. It's not purple, but on the screen of the printer, it looked blue to me. So that's why I selected it, but it turns out it's actually purple. But I just wanted to let you know that just in case you're wondering about the discrepancy between what you see here and what you're going to see in a second. So that's what I did. I had TPU at where I had TPU at the top. And then the PLA is at the bottom. And once I sliced this, it said it was gonna take 45 minutes to complete with five filament changes. And the amount from the tower was going to be a little over half a gram of filament. And the model itself, a little under 19 grams. It doesn't show you the amount of flush. I wish it did, but it wasn't too much. So I printed that out and this is what I got. So this came out really nice. So we still got that TPU on the top and the PLA on the back and around the sides. And I thought that a coaster would be a really good candidate to try this uh, multi-material printing because you got the somewhat soft middle for your cups and then you have the nice hard backing here. So you can just kind of hear the difference between those two materials. And then this is the PLA. So they are two totally different materials and it really welded together nicely. I did not glue this in. So, you know, it's not going to come out. It's not peeling apart or anything. Nothing is lifting. It's just a really nice print. I was happy how this came out. And so far in trying this TPU, I have not run into any uh, clogs with the nozzle because I am using the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's the only one that's available right now. And the TPU is just flowing through that uh, just fine. And it's flying out the back of the poop chute just like any other kind of filament. So, so far, so good. Now, there's still a lot more testing and stuff that I have to do with this printer and with TPU and trying to print that more and incorporating that more into models. But I just want to share with you what the first couple of experiences was like from something that had failed but had promised to something that turned out pretty darn good. All right, so that is all for now. If you want to see some more videos about the 85X and the uh, adventures that I have with it, I created a playlist that you can uh, check out. There should be a few videos there now and every other video that I make about this printer will show up there as well. And also be sure to subscribe so that you know when those videos are available. So that's it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.